Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, international manager of mystery, managing obscure nations so you don't have to. And our quest to make the game in Ireland a little bit less obscure continues today with a key clash with Trinidad and Tobago for World Cup qualifying. So last episode we were together, you would have seen that Gold Cup playoff run. The Gold Cup draw is taking place in about a month's time, and the tournament itself is taking place this summer. In the meantime, World Cup qualifying for the 2026 edition is underway. Remember, there's a golden opportunity here, because this is being hosted jointly by Mexico, USA, and Canada. Uh, to quote Old Lady Plays, that means two of CONCACAF's biggest nations are automatically qualified, and the USA as well. So, we got through the first round first leg, just about, against St. Vincent and the Grandines. It was nil-nil at home, one of those frustrating games where we dominated, we hit the woodwork, we had goals disallowed, it just wasn't our day. Then we travelled to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to take on the Vinnie Boys, as I believe they're called, and we went behind to an early goal. Uh, I was, you know, thinking then it was going to be one of the, we were going to get totally FM'd. But in the second half, we managed to equalise. Then they lost their cool, had a man sent off. Two goals came after that for a fairly comfortable win. We then managed perhaps one of the biggest shocks uh, of this run to date. Only a friendly, but we travelled to Honduras. And we beat them 5-0. Wow. Wow. That was quite an unexpected performance, but at the end of the day, it's only a friendly, and we came back down to earth with a bump a few days later when we could only manage to draw away to Guadeloupe with a penalty being required to grab that point. So, on to the second round of World Cup qualifying. So, this is a two legged playoff basically, and if we can win through here, we'll go into a group stage where we'll get the big boys who haven't already qualified for the World Cup, like, like Jamaica, Costa Rica, Panama. They'll be there waiting for us. Hopefully we can join them. I mean, if we could have got Barbados or Cuba teams, we know we can beat St. Kitts and Nevis. Maybe that would have been better, but Trinidad and Tobago will just have to take it. They are favourites for this game, but we're going to have to see what we can do about that, basically. So, um, it's getting to be a bit more of a settled side now. We, we're we still bringing the odd new player in when we get the chance to, but we're going with Bishop in goal. We've got Lee Scott and Wood Roach, double double barreled names in the centre of defence, Ebanks and Ebanks Williams in the full bank position, Skeet, who it remains the only player in the squad labelled as a wonder kid at this point for the central midfielder. He's currently at Real Sociedad on loan from Barcelona, so he's getting lots of game time. Look at that, 23 appearances in La Liga, so he's getting experience now at the top level. Batista, not that Batista, but this is another one of those players uh, from Portugal who decided, I want to play for the Cayman Islands, so we brought him along. Bit of experience at 24 years old, he can do a job for us. We've got Williams, Murphy, Murphy, Ruiz, so the wingers reflect the fullbacks in having very similar surnames. Rig up front. Yeah, Theron Murphy is actually making his debut a new player that we've managed to persuade to join us. C is 18 years old um, at Feyenoord. He was initially saying he was going to hold out for a place in the England squad, but we managed to bag him. And speaking of England, I'm sorry to say we have our first turncoat of this save. We had them in the uh, we had them in the new gen nation experiment, and here we go: Jonah Coleman at Ajax. As you can see, worth forty two and a half million pounds, and he's been playing a lot for the under twenty ones. Now he's accepted a call up to the national team for England. It's a competitive game they've got coming up in the nations league, so we've lost him. Anyway, let's concentrate on the players we do have with a good old team talk. So, come on, lads, show me what you can do. Just get out there and do it. So, we start off with the home leg as the lower seeded team. Hopefully, we can turn that into an advantage better than we did against St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But it's Trinidad and Tobago with the first chance, and they score straight off it. Richard Charles with an easy header. 
All right, chance perhaps for us to build something here. Batista's come out wide. He manages to keep hold of the ball. Very nice play to Skeet, to Murphy Ruiz, into Rig. It gets charged down. I think there must have been an offside there because the play stopped in a strange place. But at least we created something. There's hope for us to get back into this game. We've done this before. We've gone behind and we've clawed our way back into a tie, back into a match. Skeet wins the ball. But he goes for glory when he probably should have threaded a little pass into the box. Ah, but we get it straight off the goal kick. It comes to Rig. Rig, oh, how did he miss? Ah, oh, that was a golden chance. He should have buried that. Okay, here we go. Cross whipped in. The defender loses it and Rig just hits it straight at the keeper. Unfortunately, he was offside. But we're putting Trinidad and Tobago under pressure. It's just that we're not hitting the target often enough. Okay, we want much better in the second half. I think we were starting to play well towards the end of that first half, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to put any demands on them changing tactics just yet. So we'll see what we can do. Hopefully it doesn't backfire with an early second goal for the Trinidadians and Tobogganans, if that's how they're internationally known. And here they come, though. They're going to get the cross in here, Andrews, but it's cleared. Nicely dealt with by the defence. All right, I was about to make a substitution, but we'll see how this highlight plays out first. Skeet driving forward with the ball. He's going to shoot again. He shouldn't have shot again. Right, couple of substitutions. We're bringing on Challenger for his debut. I'm just going to change uh, Ebanks Williams into a wing back. We've brought on Subaran as well. We've changed Williams into a shadow striker. Okay, another highlight finally, but it's Trinidad and Tobago. And it's the second goal. Oh, that's not good at all. We're going to have to channel that youthful energy that got us through that Puerto Rico tie in the last round of World Cup qualification. Um, if we're going to get anything out of this, it would seem. Oh, Trinidad and Tobago looking to pile the misery on late, but we get a quick break. Rig. No, he loses out. I thought he was going to go on a heroic run there and pull one back for us, but it looks like end-to-end -end stuff here. Trinidad and Tobago with the chance to make it three. Luckily, the goalkeeper saves. We've still got to deal with the corner, though. It's Koya who's caused us a few problems today. Ooh, looks like that bounced back <laughs> off the keeper there. But Rig, now, real end-to-end -end stuff. Oh, Creed. Hacked him down. Come on, referee. Not even a yellow card for that. That's ridiculous. Batista knocks one in, and there we go. Challenger. No disallowed for handball. I thought the young defender had scored on his debut. We're going to lose this one, but there's still a second leg to go. Do stick around. Don't think it's over. Remember Puerto Rico when we lost 3-0, and then we came back to win the tie 5-3, and that was away from home as well. Right, so a bit of a change of formation, an adapted version of our FC Andorra tactic here. We're going with the 4-3-3, so we're bringing in a defensive midfielder just to try and cope with this attacking trio a little bit better, and then we'll still be looking for the quick breaks to get those goals that we desperately need. So cause an upset, make a difference, let's go. Okay, the ball's with us, Batista bringing it forward. Plays it into Murphy Ruiz. Early goal coming, perhaps. Rig. Yes. Two minutes. Not even three minutes on the clock. We've pulled one back. This could be Puerto Rico all over again. Or maybe we'll just have no more highlights until half time. So we have, it's a difficult one because we're winning on the night, but we're not doing enough yet. Get your revenge on them. That seems to have done the trick for once. Oh no. We start with a Trinidad and Tobago attack. Luckily, it hits the bar or the roof of the net, whichever, and goes out. We need to get that second goal. We need to put Trinidad and Tobago under pressure. I think if we get the second goal, psychologically, all the momentum's going to be with us. All the pressure's going to be on them. But that's a big if. Oh, no. Trinidad and Tobago have obviously been shouted at at half time, and they're making lots of attacking plays. But we've got a counter. Rig beautifully cuts inside. Goes for glory. He just moved so fast nobody could catch him. And he's won as a corner. A chance to flood the box with our players. Let's whip that in, but it's straight at the keeper. Right, so a few changes. Get that ball more directly played to the playmaker. 
get it out quickly, get the early crosses in, and we'll see what we can get. I guess we can do some overlapping as well. Let's see if we can push for the goal. We've gone up to attacking also. Confirm those changes. Get us a goal, but it's Trinidad and Tobago with the chance again. And I think we've given away a penalty. Yes, we have. Uh, this could be where the dream ends. Oh, dearie me. Straight down the middle. Bishop tried to be clever, but he was outsmarted by Ramdeen. Right then, a couple more changes. We're putting two strikers on. Bringing on some fresh legs. We've got f just over 15 minutes to go. We'll give them the team talk that we've got faith in you. Get out there and make that difference. Okay, push forward and very attacking for these final few minutes. We'll go to shoot on sight. We'll just make everything as attacking as we can. Right, it's going to take two goals in five minutes. I don't see it happening, but... Ah, oh, that's a shame. It's a shame that we got a tough draw and we just weren't able to perform in the home leg, crucially. That was the one we should... If we could have just got a narrow win in that first leg, then we could have just shut up shop here. But let's see what happens. Glidden brings it forward. Oh, great ball into Rig. Rig. Rig with two shots. Two shots both times. He couldn't quite score. Oh, that was our last chance, I think. All right, then. World Cup qualification will have to wait. I thought there, with that early goal, we were on our way. But, ah, you gave it a good effort, lads. And that's such a shame because, yeah, there would have been... If we'd got through this round, I think we would have had a good chance of qualifying for the whole thing. Well, if we'd gone through, no guarantees. We would have been in a group with Panama and Haiti, two tough opponents there. And the Dominican Republic, so, well, maybe qualifying was a long shot. So just checking in on the FA here, and they wanted us to be competitive. The performance bar is on 50%, so I guess we were competitive. So as Cayman Islands duty ends, so this episode ends. The next episode should be, in the summer, the Gold Cup. I'll keep you updated. Check out the Discord where I'll keep you updated on the draw for that. Uh, the group stage when it comes through, hopefully we can have a little run there. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer. See you again soon.